Hello everyone, we hope you are well and ready for our new topic of the day on the ATEC channel. The Chinese are famous all over the world for their unusual concepts, and their latest invention is no exception. A recent discovery by Chinese scientists could accelerate their transmission to carbon-free aviation. Indeed, they have developed a prototype plasma jet engine. Are you curious to know more? Don't move, we'll tell you everything you need to know in this video. The energy transmission faces several challenges. These challenges make it difficult, if not impossible, to replace fossil fuels in many sectors. This applies in particular to air transport. Aviation represents 5% of the greenhouse gases caused by humans, in addition to CO2 emitted directly by the combustion of kerosene. Aircraft also emit radioactive pollutants. Indeed, they leave a condensation trail that also contributes to global warming. All of this will be exasperated by the explosion in air travel after COVID-19. The International Air Transport Association predicts that by 2037, passengers' traffic will double. That means an 18% increase in emissions. Even with fuel efficiency improvements, aircraft will definitely have a harmful effect on the environment. We consider that it is even more serious than CO2 emission. It is air pollution by fine particles, and especially those associated with nitrogen oxides. According to an MIT study, the increase of air traffic is expected to be twice as harmful to the air quality as the climate. Researchers calculate the social cost per unit of pollution emanated in the phase of flight. This includes ground maneuvers, takeoff, and landing, and does not include geographical areas. The report then details the cost of each type of emission, and that includes nitrogen oxide, CO2, sulfur dioxide, carbon pollutants, and water vapor among others. Each is calculated per ton of fuel used for the ton of emissions. Depending on the results, the impact on air quality is 1.7 to 4.4 times the impact per climate unit of fuel combustion. Only three substances cause 97% of the damage in air quality and climate. They are nitrogen oxides, CO2, and contrails. As a result, measures to reduce the impact of aviation have been reviewed. For example, improving efficiency, stricter emission standards, or the use of biofuels tend to reduce CO2 emissions. On the other hand, reducing one type of emissions can be detrimental to another. In other words, the reduction of CO2 emissions may offset and increase nitrogen oxides. At one point, scientists recommended doing the opposite. That is, to focus on reducing nitrogen oxides. That is, even if it means an increase of CO2 emissions. This happens, for example, to lower combustion engines. In one scenario studied by researchers, a policy to reduce nitrogen oxide would reduce emissions by 20%. It is undeniable that kerosene damages the atmosphere and increases greenhouse effect. It contributes to global warming, affecting animals and plants. But these consequences do not only affect nature. Kerosene is also responsible for headaches, dizziness, and nausea in humans who are exposed to it. Not to mention the ultra-fine particles that can be penetrated to the body. They can leave traces in organs such as the lungs, liver, and urine. But what would really be the consequences if people around the world suddenly stopped flying? The world without aviation presents serious logistical challenges, but it can also make a big difference especially in the use of other lower carbon models of transport. It's unlikely that we'll get rid of aviation altogether. And let's be honest, we certainly don't want to. But raising this hypothetical question opens the doors to thinking about more we can do to reduce aviation's serious climate impact. First and foremost, we can imagine that people with homes in two countries will have to make a difficult choice. They'll have to choose where they want to live permanently. And let's not forget those who usually fly for their weekends or vacations. These people face a major change in their lifestyle. Their vacations would be rescheduled. They will necessarily have to be relocated to places accessibility by train, bus, car, and ferry. This would encourage people to stay in their hometowns or travel to neighboring countries. On the other hand, countries with a tourism defect would benefit from this situation, in theory. China, for example, the largest tourism defect in the world, is the closest followed by the United Kingdom, whose tourism defect was $42 billion USD in 2019. On the other hand, some countries will be hit hard. It is estimated that islands heavily dependent on tourism will be the first to be affected. In fact, we saw this during the pandemic. These islands are often only accessible by air. A sharp drop in number of flights can also affect millions of jobs, many of which will permanently be lost. So what would be the best solution for this kind of problem? Well, the Chinese have probably found the solution by processing electric aircraft. Indeed, a few existing electric aircraft prototypes, such as a small range of payload, and their future is very limited. With the coronavirus, Wuhan is now known for all types of epicenter of the epidemic. But what people know less is that this is a place that could be revolutionary for commercial aircraft. 
Researchers at Wuhan University Institute of Technology and Science publish a paper in the journal AIP Advances. They shed light on a model of a jet engine. This does not require kerosene to propel the aircraft. Their primal goal was to find the right way to fight global warming. To do this, they knew they had to reduce the use of fossil fuels in aviation to zero. The invention they developed could accelerate the reduction of that share of emissions. But before them, there was quite a few similar projects that failed or were not as successful as expected. Following the abandonment of Airbus and Rolls-Royce of the EFAN X0 emission aircraft project and the pandemic crisis, things have staggered a bit in the electric aviation side. There are, however, several projects for small regional aircraft and private propelled jets. These include Aviation Alice, Wright One, and de Havilland. But without a turbo engine, it's hard to attract the masses. American startup Wright One, with the support of EasyJet, has announced that it will be developing electric jet engines by the early 2020s. But without specifying the technology used, it may have been inspired by a prototype developed by a team of researchers in Wuhan University. The turbojet engine designed by the researcher team is capable of producing plasma. It does so using only air and electricity. This plasma jet propels the aircraft. To become more precise, the Chinese team's prototype compresses air at very high pressure. This air passes through a microwave ionization chamber and becomes plasma. Currently, the model design in the laboratory can lift a steel ball weighing one kilogram. It can only do this thanks to the quartz nozzle with a diameter of 2.4 centimeters. If we scale up the prototype to the size of an airliner, the thrust will be comparable to that of a real turbojet engine. And this is exactly the next development that the researchers are working on. In short, this plasma propulsion system can now replace aircraft's polluting engine, thus considerably reducing the emission of greenhouse gases and other polluting particles. However, this promising invention deserves to be produced and widely tested to prove its effectiveness on a real scale. And it is with this conclusion that we've come to the end of this video. Do you think an electric plane are the solutions to reduce pollution in the world? Tell us what you think in the comments. If you enjoyed our topic of the day, feel free to like this video. And if you want to enjoy our other videos like this, don't hesitate to subscribe to the channel. Leave us comments to suggest for our future topics and activate notification bell to be among the first to see our next videos. We'll see you soon on ATEC.